I tested all the throwing weapons in Cyberpunk 2077 2.0, and I gotta tell you, some of these have been my favourite weapons so far. So here's how to get them all, the best ways to use each, and all presented in the order of what I believe to be worst to best. Let's get to it. Starting off with the build I used to test the throwing weapons, because there's a fair amount of nuance here. A cool centric build, of course, specking into throwable weapon perks as well as stealth. Then cyberware perks, some heals, and air dash as usual, as well as the health regen body tree. Blade perks can somewhat also help here, but only when using these as melee weapons. Intelligence in this case doesn't need specking into at all, whilst for the relic tree you want to prioritise vulnerability analytics and optical camo. Into cyberware, and I opted to use a Sandev for this group, aiding significantly with aim, especially when fighting from bikes. Optical camo is crucial for stealth, whilst the handle wrap will majorly increase our crit chance with throwing weapons specifically. After that, I find a system of auto healing to always be useful, and as much armor as you can afford, as we'll be pretty close to the action. For more details on this kind of build, check out the latter chapter of my Endless and Deviston video once you're done here. With that out of the way though, it's on to the weapons. As it was in 1.6, I'd say down at the bottom is the Chef's Knife, a culinary instrument which, to its credit, has a better chance to inflict bleeding damage than any of the others. No doubt extra sharp for maximum effectiveness in the kitchen. A decent choice, especially for an earlier game damage over time weapon, but losing out to the others as we progress. Throwing weapons in general are one of the most powerful builds of this game, functioning also as a decent ranged equivalent to a strong sword build. With a return time of about 4 seconds then, slower than the regular knife, this one isn't quite as viable as a standalone throwing weapon, though can still work well as the first use in a string of attacks to immediately proc that bleed effect. Though its 50% lower headshot multiplier and reduced range compared to the regular knife means this one loses out when attacking from stealth, one of the most effective ways to do a throwing weapon build. Our means of getting it is kind of cool though, as it's literally sold by the chefs around Night City, i.e. the food vendors. Though be warned, they will not part with their key kitchen utensil at a fair price. And if I were you, I would save your money, as there's better knives than this that we also need to buy. If you just so happen to find one earlier on though, then there's worse weapons you could run with. This next one is basically a mini katana, with abilities leaning more towards that style of weapon. Originally called the Tanto, this knife has since been renamed to the Kaken, difference being that the Tanto is generally restricted in real life to martial arts, whereas the Kaken is a genuine combat dagger. And to hammer home the mini sword aspect, the spec is also sold by Japantown's sword merchant Specked at Cheng. The selling point of this blade is nothing to do with throwing in fact, but rather its improved damage when performing stabbing standard melee attacks. And remember, throwing weapons across the board can still benefit from the blade perks, but only when using them as melee weapons. So this blade favours closer quarters combat, with the option to throw it when required. Cool, in theory, though with a near 5 second return time, throwing away your melee weapon probably isn't a smart thing to do. What's more, when I applied the Cyclone mod to improve melee speed and create a miniature Biako, the effect didn't seem to work here. And where katanas can block bullets, even with the relative relevant perks, Kaken can do no such thing, leaving us far more vulnerable. So it's a hybrid then, between a sword and a knife, but forced to miss out on the unique benefits of both. It can be a good ranged sidearm in a katana build, but in that case I don't see why you wouldn't just use the katana for melee. And what's more, there's actually an iconic variant designed for that style coming up. The only playstyle this does suit then is a close range enough fighter who can immediately retrieve the knife after throwing it to then lay in with melee melee attacks. The basic bog standard knife next is the easy starting weapon for a throwing knife build. Craftable from level 1, but still working decently enough at tier 5 onwards. With a 200% headshot multiplier and decent return time of under 3 seconds, it may not be the fastest or the best across the board, but those good with headshots could argue it's the most effective stealth weapon for throwing, merely compounded by the fact it can also be modded. Now, I thought at first that Silencio, with its improved critical stealth damage, would be a good choice 
but it appears that effect only annoyingly works if attacking from melee, in my experience. Instead, Boomerang is decent for a potentially quicker return, but gets rendered utterly useless once you've unlocked the level 3 juggler perk. After that, Javelin offers some nice armor penetration, but the most useful throwing mod I think overall is Zero G, improving range and fully negating the effect of gravity, i.e. there's no drop off when throwing from a distance. Quite the game changer, I think, and very noticeable when it's applied, but just a small pain to acquire. I eventually got one from the Jackson Plains weapon vendor, but did have to refresh by waiting a few times. Despite its rarity though, it's easily the best throwing weapon mod and a huge perk to all non-iconic throwing weapons. What's better than a regular knife then? Why of course, one with built-in poison damage. The Neurotoxin knife has identical stats to the base knife, but trades out some of the headshot damage multiplier for a 50% chance to inflict poison, due to a cartridge contained within the blade. In simple terms, this translates to a little more damage over time, and in some cases I found is exactly the extra damage needed to finish off level 2 enemies. At the same time, for any properly specced throwing weapon build now, the Scorpion Sting Pearl already achieves a similar effect. Granted, that's only on the crit hits, but again, a properly specced build will be getting plenty of those too. Though overall, this is still gonna translate to more poison damage, which is no bad thing, but still not quite a major game changer. Definitely worth picking up earlier on in the game, and potentially worth taking in a multi-throwing weapon loadout. It can, after all, be equipped with Zero G too, but otherwise there are better ones out there. The Jackson Plains vendor sells the crafting spec, but she also sells a better alternative that's coming up. If a hybrid build of throwing weapons and swords is what you're going for, then Emperor Saburo himself has the perfect combination for you. Nihan was an iconic Kaken added in 2.0, which is found on Mr. Arasaka's body. If you're playing off an older save and missed it though, it's instead sold by Herald at the stadium. Used alongside the Satori Katana, it's possible to achieve an effect called hemorrhaging. By inflicting bleed on an enemy using one of the two weapons, look out for the icon above their head, then switching to the other weapon and continuing to attack, you the player will attain healing equal to the damage dealt by the second bleed effect. As I said in Sword Ranked, this ability teeters very much on the edge of vampirism, in my opinion, potentially alluding to the confirmation of a conspiracy preached by Gary the Prophet. Highly sought after by the vampire elite in our soccer. Whilst hybrid builds like this can forcibly split your pool of perk points, and arguably are less effective than honing in on just one class of weapon, I would come back on that and argue they're more fun with a greater range to the playstyle and being a little less monotonous. And that's why it's awesome to have pairings that encourage this, which literally work best when used in tandem. On its own though, Nihan isn't quite as special, basically a Kaken that actually deals less base damage, though does make up for it with an increased bleed chance and almost a halved return time. The fact that it's potentially free as well and acquired early means it's probably the best Kaken model overall, unless you want to use some mods. As somebody who experienced the Tomahawk prior to 2.0 in all its not able to be thrown, not quite glory, I have a lot of appreciation for this weapon now. As a throwing axe, it's slower and more cumbersome than a knife, with a sluggish return time of near 5 seconds, but I don't really care, because this thing is just cool as hell, and the increased damage plus armor penetration more than makes up for all of that in my opinion, with the cool little prep spin you do before throwing technically making it slower, but more just adding to the coolness. Slap a zero G mod on again in later game to make one tap headshots even easier, though you should still be okay landing them regardless. Definitely worth using alongside other weapons to negate the return time a bit though, but otherwise this is a viable thing to use as soon as you get your hands on one. Now whilst I wouldn't rush into buying one, given there's an even better iconic out there, if you want to relive your days playing Black Ops or Assassin's Creed 3 as soon as you can, I picked one up at either the Stadium Vendor or the one at West Winter State. I don't think a crafting spec for this exists though. The signature weapon of Scorpion now, Stinger looks like a regular knife, but with a bloody and venomous ability. Just be careful not to miss this one. It'll be given to us by Mitch during the I'll Fly Away side quest, which needs to be completed before he texts us to begin Queen of the Highway. And as a fun little extra, if you quest in a weird order, starting this quest after completing Phantom Liberty, there will be some additional dialogue referring to how that played out. Just yet another cool detail the devs thought to retroactively add. Anyway, it's 
it's basically a regular knife, but with both a 25% base bleed and poison chance. Bearing in mind, subsequent attacks on bleeding or poisoned enemies will give a guarantee of also applying the other effects. In other words, it's a knife that deals a ton of additional damage over time, merely compounded by effects such as Scorpion Sting. In 1.6, this felt like the best knife overall, but things in the game are a lot harder now, and there's several other additions. So whilst I think the additional damage over time is certainly nice, it's A, not nearly as high against bosses compared to other knife abilities, a mere 4 additional percent damage to a max tax sniper from one hit, and B, whilst it's still useful in a top tier throwing build, there's more important things to favour by that point, though since it's free, you may as well still carry it around. The iconic Neurotoxin Knife comes with a special ability, but also a major drawback. Blue Fang, like its regular counterpart, is a poison-dealing, fang-shaped knife, and the paintwork of this one looks particularly brilliant. But with a return time of 7 seconds, you'll need to slot this alongside other throwing knives for it really to be viable. Always throwing this one first at the strongest enemy in the room, preferably landing a headshot. The poison of this knife you see is special, stunning enemies for about 4.5 seconds seconds, one second after a headshot, or three seconds after any other hit. Exceptionally useful in some cases, but only on foes that you can't otherwise one-tap. Mind you, the instantaneous return of the juggler perk does make using it like that less of a problem. It's kind of like the stealth ninja's equivalent of the cripple movement quick hack, an alternative method to cast said effect from a distance, though demanding greater accuracy. Not nearly top of the list, but definitely one to keep on you at all times, because it's one of the best things to throw at bosses. And in fact, for one-on-one -on -one solo fights, it can fully prevent your opponent from attacking. Buy it from the weapon vendor in Jackson Plains, and the sooner you do, the better. Because it kind of becomes less useful as you become more powerful. The other fantastic boss fighting knife then is Headhunter, and I'd actually recommend pairing this with Blue Fang potentially, but if you do, then use this one first. It's nothing more than a slower recovery punk knife by itself, though upon hitting an enemy, it'll trigger a marked for death curse type thing. A subsequent headshot with any other weapon after this will then deal 200% extra damage. Up against Max Tack, for example, this was totally crazy, and I even managed to knock off 16% of the health of one one of them with a single hit. Though of course it does require that precise headshot accuracy unless you switched to a smart weapon say. Though I think it's probably best to keep this in house and land a subsequent headshot with another knife rather than a gun. Blue Fang or Fang for a stun follow up or just a regular punk knife say which we'll get to as it has the fastest recovery time overall and should always be on hand. Headhunter can be bought from the West Wind Estate melee vendor and again pick it up early. In a later game build the use case of this weapon is pretty much only good for bosses. Most everyone I was taking down otherwise was dropping in one hit, whereas earlier on, when you're weaker, the effect will be useful a lot more often. Into the top four now, and each of these I'd say are absolute kings amongst throwing weapons. All winners across respective departments, with which is best depending on how you like to play. Personally though, Claw takes this spot. A larger throwing axe than the Tomahawk, which is of course slower, but deals more base damage. The spec can be found at West Wind Estate, and the return time is slightly longer than the Tomahawk, except for in one instance. As is often the case, the best copy of this weapon is its Xmod 2 variant. As added in 2.1 and located in a place pretty obvious to look in for players of other open world RPGs. Video game logic dictates that something should be hidden atop this pyramid, and finally of course there is. It's free and it's the best, with significantly more range most notably, but some other boosted stats too. As usual, I'd recommend a 0G mod increasing the range even more, then maybe also a javelin. The base model of the claw might be a little slow for early game, but it's the fact that you can get the the X Mod 2 as soon as you enter Dogtown that places it so high on this list. And also, don't forget that throwing weapons now, of course, are usable from motorcycles. Another 2.1 feature which you don't want to neglect. This certainly being a strong contender for that style of play, given the extreme level of damage. And equipping a Sandeviston in this case makes aiming infinitely easier, since our bike gets slowed, but we do not. Slot the X Mod 2 variant with another claw, or perhaps two, and you'll also negate the cooldown problem somewhat.
Say what you will about Kurt Hansen, but the guy has style, and the Fang knife is arguably his best example of that. A Yakut hunting knife whose design is unlike anything else in the game. It's also proof that not all throwing weapons are designed to be used in an isolated build. Synergizing with the revolver Bald Eagle also Hansen's dealing a leg shredding effect. See, whilst Fang misses out on a high headshot multiplier like the other knives, that really isn't its style. Instead, it's kind of like a better Blue Fang, crippling enemies on every hit, but doing so immediately and recovering slightly quicker. It also has just a higher base damage than any of the other knives, and a higher bleed chance save for the chef's knife. It even sort of allows you to recreate Hansen's signature move, crippling an enemy, running to retrieve the knife, then proceeding to take melee swipes at them will do significantly higher damage, and is a systematic way to deal with people, enhanced of course by a Sandeviston. Alternatively though, by also taking Bald Eagle, we can instead throw the knife at a leg shoot said same leg, usually destroying it and returning Fang immediately, technically turning it into one of the quickest recovering knives, but only at 100% accuracy with this method each time. Not a conventional throwing knife by any means, but a powerful and fun one nonetheless, with the big caveats being it's the only one of Hansen's weapons locked into a certain Phantom Liberty choice. So unless you side with Reed during Firestarter, you cannot pick this one up, sadly. A few times within this video, I've discussed knives with special abilities. Things which, whilst good, become less relevant as you attain a higher tier, generally one-shotting throwing builds. Indeed, once getting to said certain level, one thing becomes most important. The frequency by which we can attack. And the knife, with by far the speediest recovery time in-game, is the standard punk knife. Returning in just 1.4 seconds. Make three of them with the crafting spec from Westwind Estates, and you will definitely never run out of knives to throw, though honestly even just one will do. Modded with at least a 0G, you won't even have to account for gravity. It'll be like owning a silent semi-automatic, only cooler, and with unlimited ammo. Equally, there's nothing to say you have to take this as your only knife, and as I alluded to talking about Headhunter, this is arguably the best secondary, on account of it pretty much always being available. By the time you've thrown your special ability knife too, this one will be back. And whilst that may not sound like the most incredible thing in the world, after testing all the knives and waiting on cooldowns a lot, it honestly made a huge difference. So number one for me I feel is a little controversial in terms of stats, yet I still have a funny feeling many of you are going to agree here. Let me know down below if you do or don't. A Gao, of course, is the iconic tomahawk added in Phantom Liberty, found up in Luxor Heights by defeating the boss Io Zarin. You can do this as soon as Dogtown is open to you, and whilst it's a tough fight against the VDBs, it is well, well worth it. The weapon basically has some kind of battery strapped to it, and when landing a critical hit, will emit a devastating devastating electrical shockwave. Awesome against enemy crowds, and so satisfying all round. Level up the throwing perks too, and this thing just becomes exponentially more powerful. And given the added shock factor, I'd argue it's even more powerful than the claw in practice. Although claw is certainly something to consider slotting alongside it, and or a punk knife, for again that constant reliability. Because for all of a gal's power, it does have the highest cooldown of all the throwing weapons, more than 9 seconds for me. Obviously obviously requiring something to fill the time in between when you're running with a hybrid build or, like me, just more throwing weapons. I rank it best though, because when it's available, there is nothing I'd rather throw more, neither on foot nor on a bike. One of the coolest and best things not just from this class, but the entire game I'd say. And let's be real, it's also a clear nod to Mjolnir by its size, or maybe more accurately Stormbreaker by shape. And maybe at some point using this and other items, I'll devise some kind of cyber Thor build. We'll see. Massive thanks, as always, to the patrons for supporting the channel. Not all of these ranking remakes perform equally, but it's largely because of you guys that I can afford the time to remake all of them. So do subscribe if you haven't already, in order to not miss the next one, and we're so close to 100k subs now, which is also very exciting. Thank you for watching, I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you in the next one.